Hi, Allie. How are you today? This is uh, session one of the Dental Marketing Mastery Series, um, and this is the first installment. Yeah, great. I'm looking forward to it. Let's uh, do what we do best, which is run our mouths. Yeah, right. <laughs> run our mouth and back it up with some some experience and, and, and a little bit of uh, common sense and right. um, a lot of money <laughs> and a yeah. lot of testing. Yeah. And let's... Uh, Let's get it out in the open here. Uh, the, the session one is going to be well. We were challenged. We were we were told we were we're going to have a numbered series, and um, almost everything in dental marketing has a prerequisite. In other words, you have to know something else before I tell you what's next. Right. Right. So. We struggled to come up with number one or the topic for number one um, because there are many firsts that are that firsts of knowledge that you need to understand before the rest of what we say makes sense. Exactly. And I think I think when we took a look at it, we said, what's the most fundamental of the fundamentals? Right. We don't have to know first. And. Voila. What 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 people need to understand is what kind of market they are looking at or promoting into. What does right. it look like in an overall sense? Right. And that's that's where we get into this there are two halves. There's the top half and the bottom half. Right? Right. Yeah, that it, before you go market anything, before you go advertise or promote anything, it doesn't matter if it's dentistry or mouse pads or big pens or um, cell phone covers. It doesn't. You have to understand your market. And we see a, an, just an enormous mistake being made all over the place, all over the country in dentistry. Um. And their mistake is your advantage. Every mistake your competitor makes is a potential advantage for you. So here's the mistake they are making. Most of dentistry is making. Most of dentistry uses price primarily to drive a call to action. Would you agree, Howie? Absolutely, yeah. So another like person, price, price we're talking about. A deal of some sort. Right. And what is one of your favorite sayings, Howie? For, for 26 years, you've been saying this on stage in front of Dennis. What's your, what's your favorite saying? If your offer is your best foot forward, you really don't have any feet. You're exactly. Okay. If your offer's your best foot forward, you have no feet. And it is becoming more and more and more obvious and more and more accelerated by corporate dentistry. Right. The impressions, uh, the advertising impressions that are hitting the street in America about dental services, I'd say 95% of all impressions, advertising impressions hitting the dental public are are laden with price incentives, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. And and the caveat here is that, you know, we're not saying that's not a viable market segment. Right. It is. Somebody's got to serve that, that corner of the world. Uh, exactly. Do you, as a dentist? Right. And to practice, do you want to, you want to serve that? Well, okay, we're going to, we're going to tell you about the pluses and minuses of that. Right. So, yeah, so that's part of understanding your market. And that's why segment, that's why this is segment one, because we're going to go over other topics later on in this series. Let's say we go into radio or direct mail or television. We start talking about internal promotion, websites, SEO, whatever. When we talk about those subjects. They're all going to come back and say, or I'm going to come back, or you're going to come back and say, well, it depends on what half of the market you're going after. <laughs> Are you going after the top half or the bottom half? So so let's now define for everyone, for the series, 
from this point forward, the definition of the top half of the dental market is as follows. Moms who will not choose a health care provider for their family based primarily on a price incentive. That's the top half of the dental. Uh, that's the top half of every medical market. Right. Moms who will not choose a health care professional for their families based primarily on price. OK, that's the top half of, in this case, the dental market. The bottom half of the dental market are moms who will choose a health care provider for their family based primarily on a price incentive. There's exactly. there's plenty of moms out there. It, it's basically a 50-50 split. If you if you took the entire female population uh, in the U.S. Uh, childbearing years, age ranges, and you s- basically took them and split them right down the middle. Left and right, they're your two halves of the market. And if you ask the question, would you choose a health would you choose a healthcare provider for your family based primarily on price, half of them would raise their hand and the other half wouldn't. So you just take right. you know, take the half that's raising their hand, put them in the bottom half, and take the, the half that's not raising their hand and move them to the to the right half. So there's your two halves of the dental market. And you have to go after each half differently. You right. cannot go after this is well first the the first big mistake is dentistry thinking that they have to have a price incentive to promote dentistry. Now, Howie, you started this company in nineteen eighty nine. That's twenty seven years ago. Oh my gosh. I know. Um, you and us, we have been proving for 27 years that you don't have to have incentive laden <laughs> copy or incentive laden audio or incentive laden video or incentive laden anything to get a phone to ring by a high quality patient into a dental office. We know that our clients know that we've proven that for 27 years, but there's a reason why. There has to be a reason why 95% of all the impressions you see on the street that are advertising dental services have incentives all over them. Well, one, dentists don't believe that they can attract a new patient without a deal. Right. Okay, so, so the audience, if you're a dentist and you're listening to this, we love you, but we're blaming you. <laughs> okay. It's your fault. You don't believe it. Okay. It's not our fault. We've been screaming this for 27 years. <laughs> um, so it's, it's totally your fault, but we, we understand why. All right. And, and, and now we get to why is 95% of the advertising impressions you see in dentistry incentive laden and the answer is is because well there's several answers the first answer is is because it's easy right. that is it takes no testing no research no market research you don't have to all you have to do is be the best deal in town. That's not hard to do from a design standpoint, from a deployment standpoint. You can get almost anyone to mock up, let's say, a five and a half by eight postcard with a $29 new exam, new patient welcome special on it and mail them to everybody in your community. Almost anybody can do that. Okay. It doesn't require a lot of creative uh, chops, so to speak. No, right? there's it's, no testing. There's no nothing. Right. Right. Go slap it on a card and out you go. Yeah, and and that's and that's fine if you're selling vinyl siding, or if you're selling um those little fire pits for your patio, or if you're selling I don't know power washers. All right. 
I'm sure there's a market for the cheapest power washer or the cheapest snow blower or whatever. All right. I'm sure I'm sure there's the cheapest paint or the cheapest almost everything in life. There's the cheapest end of the retail spectrum. But in dentistry, it's based upon mom's protective, natural genetic protective instinct. It's not based on her amount of money, although that helps. It's not based on her house value, although that helps. It's not based solely on her credit rating, although that helps. It's not based on her marketability index, although that helps. Bottom line is, is that the moms in the top half of the market are genetically predisposed with a slightly higher protective instinct for their family than, and they're almost unable to choose a healthcare provider for their family based primarily on a price incentive. Okay. That's, that's what you're dealing with. So if you're, so I'm going to get back to what I said before. We are blaming you, but there's a really good reason why you couldn't recognize it because, I mean, basically it's the genetic instinct to protect and it's unrecognizable. The only way you could figure it out is if you did 27 years worth of testing on a dental market and independent consumer research with thousands of people responding to the same questions over and over and over again before you finally figured out half the market doesn't want price incentives and the other half does. Right. Now, let, let's point out something here. That it's not that price is of no concern to the to the moms in the top half. Of course, it's a concern for everybody. But it's not the primary concern. So it's moms in the top half. And by moms, we, we gen- generically mean women. They are the health care decision makers in this country, and they have been forever, and they probably will be forever more. So that group... Uh, isn't primarily using price as their main reason to call you. And that's a good thing if you want to target the top half of the dental market. Right. So here we are, and we, we so we know that 95% of all impressions in dental advertising are used or are using price as a primary driver for a response. I think every dentist listening to this podcast right now is sitting there shaking their head up and down because that's all they see come through their kitchen table, on their TV, listening on their radio, or if they Google the the competitors near them in their market, that's what they see on those websites. I mean, basically, that's what dentistry is seeing. So now, now introduce, for the last few years, introduced corporate dentistry with enormous marketing budgets, and it's very clear where what half of the market they're going after. For the most part, they're going after the bottom half. Right. They're going after fast, easy, phone rings, get them in the door. Right. And, and I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying look around you, <laughs> okay? You I'm not making this up. All right. That's, that's the advertising you see coming out of the corporate chains. Okay. So if you're a solo dentist or a small group or two or three doctor practice or what have you, and you have to compete with this and you have a marketing budget, are you going to throw your marketing budget into that same pool they are? Well, yeah. And, and the really bad news is their pool. Their pile of money is a lot bigger than yours. A lot bigger than yours. Okay, so that battle's already been fought, and you've lost. Right, you right, you've lost that war. You're not going to outspend them. You're not going to out uh, efficient them. You're not going to out anything them. Okay, other than you can outsmart them. Right, and, and this is this is why this first segment is so incredibly vital to your understanding of the rest of the podcasts that we produce for you. The whole top half of the market is almost completely ignored. Now, our company generates about 14 million impressions a month. 
on behalf of all of our clients. So you took all of our clients in aggregate, add up all the things that we're doing, all the internet, the mail, the radio, television, all the print, all the everything, all social media, everything that we do for all of our clients, and you add up all the impressions, you're going to come up to around 14 million impressions a month. That's just our little company with a few hundred customers, (laughs) with a few hundred clients. We're the only ones doing this. So if you're going to be smart, if you're going to compete, especially with the solo dentists who are promoting based on price, and now the corporate chains who are coming in and promoting based on price, you have two choices. You can either, okay, just throw your, be the, be even cheaper than they are, try to get those phone calls before they get them, or you can look at the top half of the market and say, wait a second, that's, those are the people I want anyway. I don't want a whole bunch of shoppers coming into my practice all the time. I don't want to kiss that many frogs. I don't want to, I don't want two out of eight to, to complete their treatment. I don't want one out of eight to stick to my recare. I want good quality new patients to, to pick up the phone and dial my practice. Now, that's the opportunity I spoke about before. Everyone's mistake is someone else's opportunity. If everyone in your local market or almost every dentist in your local market is promoting using deals, 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 they are actually alienating the top half of the market. Those moms, and we know this through statistical testing, those moms tend to tune those practices out. They identify them quickly because of the offers, and they tend to immediately make the decision not to use them. They don't know why they're not, they're not using them. They're not that in tune with their instinct. They just know that they're not going to choose them. Right. So, so if, if, if eight of your competitors in your dental market are postcard deal, print ad deal, radio deal, TV deal, internet deal, and, and, and all the people in your community are seeing deal, 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 50% of those moms aren't going to choose them. All you have to do is speak to and speak correctly to and that's a key, speak correctly to the top half of the dental market. If you do that, then 8 out of 10 will go through with treatment. 8 out of 10 will stick into your recare. You'll, and those are the types of people that refer the same kind of people with like kind values for the health care that they choose. We're not talking, we're not talking about, uh, you know, this, this, these aren't CEOs and, and supermodels. That's not what we're these. This is Jane Q. Soccer mom, right, Howie? Yeah. We're not. Right. There, there's no cosmetics and flowing hair and you know, in any of our work, none of that exists. Okay, well, this is yeah, the reason it doesn't exist is because it it doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? You know, if you want big cases, huge cases, long lasting. Uh, patients that come in over and over again and refer and have the wherewithal to pay for it, you don't actually get that kind of case by advertising just the purely high-end cosmetics. Uh, that has its own pitfalls. All right, The really big cases, the really nice patients come from the so-called family market, and that's moms in the moms or women in the top half of them market who won't use you based primarily on price. Another caveat with this is, okay, so let's just go after the the top app. Great, great, great idea. Uh, You have to realize a few things. It's going to take you longer to build momentum because you're you're searching uh, the end of the pond that is very much more particular. They They don't care about the deals. In fact, the deals turn them off. So it just takes a little longer to tap into that market. But you throw your line in, and Mark, you have some really hot statistics on this. You've been tracking this for years. Yes. What is what is the the, the ratio there? I mean, well, it's the, the, when you, when you're using price incentives, you can start to get. Well, actually, if you use price incentives, especially aggressive price incentives, 
and you hook price incentives with insurance and you go after the financial side hard with mom. Moms who are particularly interested in that financial side, that's an immediate response. You know, if you have an offer that's going to expire in three weeks, that's another immediate response, right? Okay. So you can make price incentives immediate volume responses. That's the good news. The problem is, is that's where the good news ends. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Because these are shoppers. Guess what they're going to do next time they need a dentist? Right. Okay. They're going to look for the next thing that they get in the mail or on the TV or in radio or whatever. Okay. On the internet, some Groupon club that they're part of. That, that's the mindset. So don't be surprised if you're kissing a lot of frogs at the treatment plan level and you never see these people ever again in your recare. Okay. So, it's just a balance. I'm not saying all shoppers are like that. There is no such thing as all. It, all the win, all the moms in the top half are not great patients, and all the moms in the bottom half are terrible patients. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying that you have to understand which half of the market that you're promoting to. You have to craft the message properly to speak to where their head is at, not where your head is at. Not what you want, what they want, okay? And especially with the top half. With the top half, even if you do have an offer, you have to bury it. You have to make, you have to minimize it. And I know this sounds 100% completely you know, opposed to almost everything you ever learned in Marketing 101, okay? But we have millions in testing, and we will tell you you know, we will tell you that we wasted one of, one of the two and a half million dollars in testing on trying to make the top half simpler, trying to make trying to make the designs fit what we learned in marketing 101 class. And the reality is, the reality is, is that with the bottom, you just have to give them a deal. Give them a convenience and show them a Google map. With the top, you have to give them six, seven, eight, nine, ten reasons to choose you. You have to mix services, technologies, conveniences, public relations assets, and you have to mix them in such a way that there's a good balance so that when that mom in the top half looks at that piece or listens to that ad or sees that on the website or wherever you're promoting your dental practice, you have a greater chance of speaking to her at a level that will interest her in at least one of the eight or 10 things. Remember, you don't have price to use it. You don't, price is a crutch. Marketers use incentives because they haven't figured out how to do it any other way. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. We figured out the other ways to do it. We have the recipe book. So what we're telling you is is if you understand what you're getting into, if you're going to promote to the bottom, promote to the bottom properly, target them properly, deploy them properly, and you'll get a good result. If but understand that the ROI on the bottom is 11 times less than the top. That's what I was getting at. How valuable is the top half well, to the dentist at versus the bottom half? Well, there's, there. right. There's, there's, there's two numbers, with two primary numbers. ROI. The answer is it's 11. The difference between the bottom and the top is 11 times. So the top is 11 times uh, will generate 11 times the ROI in an average practice, in an average, with a dentist with an average scope, with an average staff, with an average everything. Everything's average on the spreadsheet right down the middle. It's 11 times greater return. The, but the return isn't the only thing you consider because w- when you promote to the bottom, you also have increased costs. You have increased opportunity costs because eight out of 10 ex- exams end up nothing. Uh, cause they don't come back for their treatment. You end up with an increased administrative cost because eight out of 10 on your recall list are never coming back, but you're still going to follow up with them. You're still going to send them an email. You're still going to send them a text. Somebody in your office is still going to try and call them. 
somebody's going to try to get them back in their practice at least five times before you finally give up. That costs money. Okay. So it's not just the 11 times ROI. <clears throat> it's also with the, with the top half of the dental market, you don't have the, you don't have increase in costs. You have decreases in costs. Okay. So it's, it's both. It's decrease in cost and 11 times better return. Here's the problem though. The problem with going after the top is how we mentioned before is it takes longer. And dentists don't like to, they don't like that first year, right? You know how we always, we have a first year client, Howie, and, and, we're, yeah. and, we're, and we're always like, I hope he makes it to the second year, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and, but it's because true. Then, how many because people, they'll love us in but, the second. Right, but we have hundreds of clients who have been with us for more than 10 years, right? So we, yeah. you know, if you get them through that first year, and we tell them all, we say, look, this is going to take a little while. This is what's going to happen. This is the number of calls you're going to get. This is how many new patients you're going to get. Your average revenue per patient should be right around this. If that all happens in your first year, you're golden. You you don't have to go anywhere else for your marketing. So um, anyway, so that's that's the, 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 the top half of the dental market. That's the bottom half of the dental market. That's what to expect from each as far as a return and costs. Um, the bottom half is getting hammered by almost every dentist in the country. The top half is largely being ignored. Um, if, if you're a dentist listening to this and maybe you tried this or tried that or tried this for a while and it didn't, it stopped working. Um, I would just caution you to go back to the basics and see what kind of a message you were sending. If it was a message filled with offers and your offer was going out with another 17 offers uh, from other competitive uh, dental practices, that might be the reason why you're seeing a decline in your return. Howie, can you think of any any other Top half, bottom half characteristics that I'm missing here. Well, no, but uh, you know, I just would like to restress this: is that going after the bottom half is a perfectly viable market segment to go after. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 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 dentists who contact us and interact with us over the years, they aren't particularly interested in that half. And that those are the people who come to us, and that's that's the people we've been serving for many many years now, and, uh, and there's a reason they they finally figured out that what they were doing wasn't working. They've thrown enough stuff at the wall and it didn't stick, and they're tired of it now. Now, right? It's something that that will get them the patients that they would love to see in their chairs. Yeah, and there and there we get a lot of. Um Especially now, we get a lot of requests for, um, you know, for, from dentists who have just completed their implant courses or just completed their sleep apnea courses or just, you know, they've just got Invisalign certified or what have you. And they're adding services to their marketed to their, uh, their, their service mix. And they don't really know how to reach out to the community and, and get patients interested, right? Um, we never, ever go to the bottom half of the market with those. Can you remember? Have we ever gone to the bottom half of the market to promote additional services that a dentist just qualified? I, I can't remember. We no, almost, I, I, yeah, we almost I, always go to the top, top half of the market. Yeah. That's a good first, uh, basic introduction to our, to our series here. Where can uh, a dentist go to find this series, Mark? <laughs> Where are we going to be? <laughs> We're going to be on our YouTube channel, dentalwebcontent.com, and that, those places. Oh, oh yeah. We're going to be on our YouTube yeah. channel, probably on Facebook, I would imagine. Uh, Dental Web Content, Facebook, NPI's Facebook. So, yeah, you'll probably hear this all over the place. Um, and if you do listen to this, send us some feedback. Reach out to us. 
on our page, on our podcast page. Uh, reach out to us on our Facebook um, pages uh, or whatever. Just send us an email. Um, tell us if you if you think this is is, ver- is valuable to you. Tell us if you don't think it's valuable to you. Tell us if you think we're all crazy or, you know, you think we're all washed up because we've been doing this for 27 years. You know, you can tell us whatever you want. 